Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Rob Anders, CEO of NEO, one of the largest digital art platforms in the world to discuss what is driving the NFT trend. Rob, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. And I guess really what the question is, these memes, these digital art pieces that everyone is talking about right now, are they really worth the investment? What do people need to know as the hype continues to build? So, you know, I think if we look back for many years, scarcity has existed and usually there's always been people who filter that quality. So if you look at the traditional art world, there's been advisors and curators and galleries that will define what's good and what's not good. When you bring people who filter and determine true high quality art and you combine that with the technology that NFT and blockchain provides, then you have something which from a value perspective can really go all the way. Uh, the challenge and the hype comes when you have a technology which is legitimate, but inherent value in the art which is illegitimate. And Rob, I guess the question is, let's look at Beeple, for example, right? Sold a non-fungible token artwork, an NFT, for record $69 million. I mean, we understand what's driving the digital art trend, but when you think about it from a valuation perspective, does, does that make sense? Listen, if we look at the traditional art world, what we know is that really there is no ceiling on price, whether it's paintings or sculptures. Um, we saw a $450 million piece and, and digital art has been around since the 70s and 80s, but it's never really been a, a mainstream medium. And when it has, and when the infrastructure is there to really not just sell it, but also preserve it so that it's actually accessible and play it so you can actually experience it. When all of that comes together, then potentially you could see no ceiling on price. And many people and many collectors that were involved with video art for many years would say that it was always one of the most undervalued mediums that exists because its artistic value was always there. Now there is the opportunity for this to go, but that's not to mention, that's not to say that every piece of digital moving image on a, on a browser is worth, is worth millions of dollars, just like every artwork is not millions. But certainly what happened last week with people was a pivotal moment um, and we're seeing a tipping point in the industry right now, which I think has long-term opportunity. Well, Rob, here's kind of a silly question, right? We're, we've only heard about NFTs for maybe a month or two within mainstream media. So are prices going to keep rising on sales or is this just a bubble driven by hype? I mean, when we talk about bubbles, we look at that in terms of business cycles and the amount of years we're in between a recession and a trough, right? I mean, this is only a couple of months that the average person has even recognized the term NFT. So, I mean, NFT has been around for a while. You know, if we look at what's been building up over the last 12 months, you know, that concept of a tipping point is that we've seen obviously huge digital transformation during, during COVID. We've seen crypto and Bitcoin hitting record highs. We have, you know, 100,000 new crypto millionaires um, from those Bitcoin gains looking to speculate in different ways. And on the artist side, you're seeing artists have always been creating and telling their story of the digital world or the world that we live in, which is now digital. And so all of this has come together and at the same time, you have people like Elon Musk dropping tweets out and this whole thing goes like a tinderbox and it goes boom. And definitely there is, there, is, there is hype and definitely, you know, one can't expect there to be this trajectory in all the prices of everything going up. I remind you, if you look at the volume of transactions, the majority of them are not in the tens of millions of dollars, but still, you know, a thousand dollars, for example. Um, if it is, but with all of that said, if you bring all the components together, art, which in itself has inherent value and infrastructure to see that this isn't just about trading it, but also preserving it and experiencing it, then this has a long-term opportunity. And I would argue that as an asset class, investors can come in now, and if they're buying properly, there is an opportunity for them to, uh, to, to do well in the long-term. And that leads me to my next question. What do prospective investors need to know about the world of digital art and NFT? So again, it all starts, I keep coming back to the same point in, in, in the inherent quality of the art. You know, art is valued under, you know, and for a number of different reasons, which, which is a, a basis of you know, who the artist is and the previous history of the art and the, art and the artwork itself. What we're seeing now is the art medium of digital art has been very much accepted, but for a piece of art to have the opportunity to speculate or even hold its value, we need to make sure that in the same way as traditional physical art was, 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 being, uh, was being valued and, and being, uh, being pointed out the same way. So those safeguards need to be in there. The filters of quality need to be in there. And again, it's not just about the transaction. If we want this to be long-term valuable, you need to be able to preserve the artwork, to store the artwork, to present the artwork. It might not be hanging a physical canvas on the wall and making sure it doesn't get dusty, but it will mean that digital files need to be upgraded. They need to be able to play on the latest screens that we have in our lives. So there's a lot of elements that need to come together, but it starts with the quality of the art and the artist behind it. 
And what does this mean for the art world in the longer term? Do we no longer just need exclusive access to the auction houses or does this really truly um, democratize access to art? So I think definitely platforms like uh, and, and technologies like NFT and we've speak about the creator's economy presents opportunity for artists, first of all, to reach the audiences themselves rather than having to go through the art system. And certainly when you're storing the, the transaction history on the blockchain, it opens the opportunity for more transparency and artists can then earn from secondary sales. So this is all good. With all of that said, okay, the, the art world, I think, has been struggling with how is it going to go digital. So I think the art world and the galleries are going to come into this space slowly and, and a little bit uh, guarded. And, and there needs to be responsible infrastructures to make sure that it's done in a credible way. I think for the medium as a whole, every aspect of our lives in digital, and this goes for other content sectors, it's not just about ownership, but also about accessibility. So we've seen what we've, what we, uh, we've seen what's happened to music, companies like Spotify. I think long term, in terms of digital art as a whole, there will be people who want to own and buy it, and NFTs just enables that. And there'll be people who just want to buy a monthly subscription to be able to experience some of this art in their in their homes. And you know, whoever brings that together, and we think it could be us, you know, has the opportunity to really be the long term player. Here. And Rob, let's wrap up with that. Explain to us where Neo fits in this ecosystem and how it's going to impact your business moving forward. We spent the last five years ensuring the moment a digital artwork is created, it lives on one platform, which deals with the management, the preservation, any type of transaction from NFT through to subscriptions, and actually deals with the playback of the work itself, not on a web browser, but on a screen with global partners with people like Samsung and others. So since this market has taken off, we said a few years ago to investors, we said one day a gift will be sold for a million dollars. And when that happens, the world will be a different place and we need to be ready. We're ready. We're seeing that obviously from first and foremost from, from investors. We'll be announcing new investment from some quite significant players recently. From artists who are looking to us and the galleries, how do we navigate this space and do this properly? And of course, we're expecting a significant upside both this year and for the long term in terms of revenues and users. So very exciting moment for us. All right, Rob, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us Thank on Trade so Talks. Much. And thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Melantrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.